Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to create these curtains, remake them. Uh, I actually bought these off of Etsy, and so now I'm actually going to make them and show you guys how to achieve the same look. These are pleated curtains here, okay? They've got four inches of buck ram at the top, half an inch uh, inseam here with the blind stitch, and then all the way down here, um, you've got four inches as well, not buckram, but it's basically folded over. And then um, there's a blind stitch right there and there's a blind stitch here. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And we are going to recreate this so that you guys can see what it looks like. About eight years ago, I actually went on Etsy and ordered fabric um, to send to an Etsy seller's house in order to get these drapes done. And it costs way less, a quarter of the price than actually doing it at a local store. I think at a local store, these drapes would run me about $3,000 and I think I spent about $500, so a little less than a quarter uh, of the cost. What you might find interesting is that these wingback chairs actually are fabric from the curtains that were there before. And then I reupholstered this wingback chair. Anyway, so I wanted pinch pleated curtains because it has that cleaner look to it. I can use the um, rods and the rings that I already had. And I love the look of clean, tailored drapes and curtains. Hey guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and reveal to you which fabric I bought. It, there's no surprise here. It's the same fabric that is hanging that you just saw. Um, I like this fabric for a few reasons. First off, it's very flowy. So if you could see like the fabric as it's hanging, it's very flowy. I have a version of this in my little boy's room. Um, that's a more of a gray color to kind of match his theme. Uh, but I like it because it folds really well. Um, also, it is light. And so that means that the rods aren't as heavy. And then lastly, uh, because I like the texture and it looks like it's linen, I'm not sure if it's 100% linen, but I love the way it looks. Um, it's beautiful and it hangs really well. Okay, so I want to take a moment to talk about the width of your fabric and the cheater way that I do it. Uh, because the proper way that you're supposed to actually calculate the um, width of your drapes uh, and the fabric that you're going to use to make the width of your drapes is to actually um, add the return. The return is basically on the left and right. Um, you can actually attach your curtains to a hook on the wall to block out light. And I'll go ahead and show you what that hook looks like. But that is the return and it's typically about four inches away from the wall, three to four inches away from the wall. You add that to your calculation and then you take the width plus the return and then multiply that by 2.25 so that your curtains look uh, properly full, uh, meaning that it has some volume to it. If you want to do it my cheater way and you're not planning on selling these curtains or anything like that, here's the way that I size my curtains and drape fabric so that I'm not having to cut and sew more stuff. So what I did was I took the window width, 32 inches, and then figured out what the purchase fabric width was, which is 52 inches. And the proper fullness is 72 inches, so I want to be around that number. So if I took my fabric in half, and that means that I'm only having to cut the panel in half and I can use it on the other side, so 52 inches divided by 2 is 26 inches. So I know that one uh, piece of fabric isn't going to be enough. I have to attach another piece of fabric in order to get one panel. So if I add 52 inches plus 26 inches of the half width, I get 78 inches, which is around the proper fullness. And I went with that. And the only con to this is I have to add more rings in order to support the, I don't know, additional six inches uh, for that proper fullness. And that's really how I measure for drapes. And I think it looks fine uh, exactly how I did it. I wouldn't recommend going more than like 10 inches less. So for example, if my measurements then came out to like 62, I would not do that. I would round up uh, just so that you get that fullness uh, that curtains like pleated curtains have. If you want to do it the proper way for the width of your panel, you'll want to account for two inches of folding on the left, two inches of folding on the right, and then four inches uh, for the return if you want to have a return, and that's on each side. Make sure you know which side the returns are on. So if you're if it's the left panel, it's the left side. If it's the right panel, it's the right side uh, for the return. Now for the length at the top, what you'll need is about five inches on both sides. So make sure that you account for that um, when you're measuring. I prefer having uh, my measurements so that the panel actually hits and skims the floor because I feel like that's a cleaner look than a puddled look. 
to give you a visual, this is the right panel and it's folded under. So there's one inch there and then I folded it under and then um, that is then blind stitched. And then you'll see that it's four inches from the bottom uh, that it's folded so that it has like a thicker look so that it kind of matches the buckram at the top. All right, things you'll need include a rotary cutter, a scissors, really good scissors, iron, and um, an ironing pad as well as the fabric you're going to be using. The hardest part to this was actually measuring and trying to figure out what size the drapes are. So as long as you followed my instructions for the cheater ones, and again, it's not professional or the proper way, but it is the easiest way if you want to make curtains for your house. Uh, but the hardest part for me was actually cutting the fabric to make sure that each panel was the right size and trying to find space in my house. And I literally used our master bedroom, our living room, our kitchen, our kids' playroom uh, over the course of like two or three weekends when I was making uh, the set of curtains. And again, um, it just takes time cutting and just making sure that you measure and remeasure uh, carefully. So what I did was I actually laid it out. Uh, the fabric was already, you know, folded um, on the little thing that it came in. And so what I did was I went ahead and used a measuring tape to measure it out. And then I used my husband's level that I found in the basement to make sure that um, I cut it evenly. Um, I cut it with the fabric already folded. And so what I did was I uh, used a mat below it as well as then use that level, that metal level metal level is important because it provides that weight so that you can cut against it and then I just use a rotary cutter just to cut uh, the fabric um, and again as you can see here I'm taking my time because I do not want my curtains to look uneven and so that's very very important when it comes to just measuring and cutting uh, your fabric once I cut each of the first uh, panels, I also had to make sure that I cut um, one of the pieces of fabric in half because I was going to have one full fabric size added to another half to make one full panel. And then I just used this makeshift bench, uh, linen bench as an ironing board uh, for all of the fabric that I cut. And again, it was a faux linen and so um, it had a lot of creases. So just made sure that um, the creases were gone before I started sewing. All right, first step is to sew the panels together. Make sure the top and bottom are even, um, so that should be easy. And then what you'll want to do now is then um, go ahead and then iron one inch um, at the bottom and then fold it up in iron four inches from the bottom. Okay, so one inch and then four inches, and that will give you your bottom panel. Your next step is going to be uh, basically doing this blind stitch. As you can see, this is a blind stitch, and when you actually turn the fabric over, why it's called a blind stitch is that basically it catches part of the fabric so that you're only seeing little bits of it on the proper side. To prepare for the blind stitch, what you want to do is go into your living room or wherever you have space and lay out your fabric. What I did was I placed uh, the fabric that was, again, attached together, this is one panel, and had the wrong side facing up. And then what I did was I went ahead and folded it a little bit underneath, like the edge underneath where I had ironed, and then made sure that the fabric was pulling uh, above it just a tad. And so you want to leave about um, a centimeter uh, so that you can actually do the blind stitch on the side. So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like a little bit more close up. Once you're done pinning, um, you'll want to go to the sewing machine and then basically there's generally a separate foot in order to do the blind stitch. Um, as you can see here, as the needle is going to the left, it's basically catching every so often um, the left side, which is going to be seen on the right side of the fabric. So all I'm doing is slowly feeding it through and making sure that the fabric catches on the other side. It might take you a little bit if you haven't done a blind stitch before, but this is a great uh, way to practice that blind stitch skill. Before we go ahead and do the pleats, what you're going to be doing is the left and right side of the panel. And so this also requires doing a blind stitch as well. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and iron uh, about one inch over. Here it looks like half an inch. I would recommend a whole inch because it was really hard just trying to get that pleat in there. But what you'll want to do is be able to iron over an inch and then be able to utilize uh, the blind stitch um, in order to go ahead and catch that other piece of fabric. So you'll have two inches uh, basically folded over um, in one inch strips on one side and on the other side. So make sure that you pin and go ahead and sew those areas before moving on to then adding the buckram. All right, when you sew this though, make sure that you're not sewing at the top where we're going to be inserting the buckram. That's hugely important. So go ahead and sew the panel from the bottom of the folded area at the top all the way down to the bottom, um, especially like at the bottom, like a uh, panel where you've like pulled it an inch and four inches. That area can definitely be sewn shut, but do not do that for the top of the panel. 
Now you're finally to the point where you can actually measure out and cut your buckram. Um, they also come in sizes where it's pre-cut um, to your specifications to like four inches or four and a half inches. So um, you can save yourself the trouble if you bought a pre-cut buckram. I apparently made a mistake and I had to cut my own. Before you get to this part where I'm kind of showing you how to insert the buckram, you'll have to iron uh, the top of your panel, similar to what you did at the bottom. So you'll do a one inch fold, iron that, and then fold that over uh, for four inches, and then um, the buckram will actually fit kind of like in an envelope. What the buckram allows you to do is actually make that pleat a little bit more crisp, a little bit more clean, um, and also strengthens the fabric, um, if, especially if you have like linen fabric like me, you don't want the pleats to kind of droop over. And so the buckram allows it to hold its form and its structure. And so if you measure it correctly and if you have ironed straight and I would recommend ironing with that like acrylic uh, see-through ruler that you can find at any hobby store uh, that will allow you to ensure that as you're ironing you're measuring and uh, ensuring that like all of the fabric that you're folding over is evenly ironed uh, with the right width and the right length. So overall, all you do is insert it, and that's pretty much it for this step um, is you're just making sure that it fits all the way through with that buckram. Now, after you're done with the buckram, what you'll want to do is go ahead and um, use pins to measure every four inches, taking into account the return um, that you want to have. And so every four inches, what I did was I took a pin. However, between each of the pins, there is a section for the pinch pleat. So you'll have space, pinch pleat material, space, pinch pleat material. So here I'm folding it so that I can make the pinch pleat. And so I took one of the pins out and then basically restuck the pin that was folded over and made sure that it overlapped because that's going to make the actual pleat itself. And then I went ahead and measured four inches from there to the other side, skipped that section, and then did four inches on the other side so that I can make the next pinch pleat because it's like pinch pleat, four inches pinch pleat four inches and again if you want to return um, or you want like that overlapping closure make sure you take into account uh, that piece of it um, for either side um, of each panel. Then what you'll want to do is sew on either side going up and down from the buckram like the four inches from the top to the uh, bottom of the buckram and then what you'll want to do is go ahead and actually make the pinch pleats. It sounds harder than it really is. It just takes a little time and practice so make sure that you get a pretty uh, good strong needle because you're going to be doing this by hand and creating those pleats by hand um, after you kind of sew on the either side of the buckram on each of the different pleats. All right, so what I'm going to show you is basically we're going to push it down, um, each of the panels down, and then you're going to make like this little basically three panel like uh, section. Okay, so um, I don't know how else to call it. So you're going to push it down so that you get three leaves, and then what you want to do is take the needle and then on each side um, so there's like one two sides right so you'll want to take the uh, thread and basically thread it through a couple of times and I kind of pull it through just to make sure it's secure but you'll want to do it a couple of times in order to get that like layered pleated look okay so I'm going through each side and then I'm going to go to the other side and also secure it that way and all you need to do is push it um, in order to ensure that it goes through Here's another view of it as well. So as you can see here, I folded it so that it's kind of even. Then I did the middle section first, which you probably didn't see in the previous section that I showed you. But I did the middle section first, and then I made sure that kind of looped all the way through. And then once I did that, I flattened it with the middle part sewed, and then just made sure that the pleats on either side of that top middle one was actually even uh, with the other side. You can't see it, I don't know why my camera moved that way, but um, basically I'm doing the same thing that I showed you in the previous section, which was so on either side of the leaf of the pleat. I like calling it a leaf, I don't know what it's called. So here again, I showed you how I kind of um, folded it initially, pushed it down, and then made three little like leaf pleats or whatever. And then I sewed the top and then I sewed the sides together. You finish the pleat by going to the bottom part of the pleat, which I'm going to show you, and basically sew it um, from 
one side to the other side of the three leaf pleat. Okay, so what you'll want to do is get some thread and then you'll go ahead and fold it together and go through basically um, I do from the middle first so that like you can't see the knot so go ahead and basically push it through you're not pushing it over but you're pushing it in and out from either side to secure the pleat um, so that it looks really nice and pleated uh, when you actually hang it up make sure you do it a couple times to make sure that the pleat is secure uh, so that it doesn't look all floppy when you actually hang it up on the wall so ensure that you go a couple times and like I said it takes a little bit of practice in order to get the pleats just right but your goal is to make sure that the pleats are all even when it, they're folded and then make sure that you secure them on the top and the bottom now I forgot to mention why we actually replaced her curtains. It was because this one had like the inner lining in my girl's room and it was so heavy. Like the fabric was heavy, the lining was heavy, and so I wanted to replace it. And so now the girls are older, they really don't need uh, blackout curtains like they did when they were little. And so what I wanted were lightweight curtains that didn't make the rods fall off. And yes, my rods fell off because of how heavy those uh, gray curtains in the back were. So I went ahead and tried to repurpose uh, these uh, pleat hooks here. And I'm glad I did it because I want to show you guys the wrong way to do it. You see how I'm inserting it in? It is wrong. Um, as you can see, the hooks are in the middle when they actually should be sitting near the top. If you look at the gray area there, the gray curtains, like the hooks should be at the top so you should be actually putting these um, in the middle so that the hooks actually are hooked at the very top and curve over but not so you can see it on the other side so this is what it looks like after I fixed it um, again it's curved over to the top so that it's actually making it so that the curtains look even uh, next to the rings and as you can see this is a close-up here and also wanted to show you what that looks like so that it's near the top but you can't really see it on the other side but it allows all of the um, curtains to hang the way they should and you can see the eyelet on the right there that is for a return if you guys don't know what a return is that is actually what uh, makes curtains stand out from like DIY ones if you use a return that allows you to block the sunlight coming in um, from the sides and that is the most professional way to create drapes is ones with returns so that it blocks out the light and I chose not to use this eyelet just because I didn't want to have to deal with moving all the curtains over again removing the finial and the ring and so I just decided to basically leave it alone but I showed it to you guys here so that you guys can see what that looks like if you wanted that professional touch to your curtains and your drapes but overall I am happy of how they turned out especially with DIYing my first pleated curtains um, on my own and I absolutely love it and it it could use a little bit more length on the ground but I'm not even going to worry about it because chances are the kids are just gonna make a mess out of it anyway so overall it turned out great and they look very similar to the ones that I have in my living room and my um, master bedroom um, I loved how they turned out it provides that consistency and that feel that um, I absolutely love and if you guys don't want curtains and want a different window treatment I have a video on how you can install um, plantation shutters into your house um, I'll go ahead and link that in the video above but if you like this video and you want DIY projects like this where I give you guys cheater hacks tips and tricks in order to decorate your home please subscribe uh, consider subscribing and maybe hitting the like button that definitely helps the algorithm a lot for me and if you guys like videos like this make sure you click on the bell notifications for the next time I create a new video thanks guys bye